Welcome everyone to this broadcast. My name is Dr. Rudri Eze. Today we are talking about the National Infertility Awareness Week for Nigeria. 24th to 30th of every January, Nigeria takes aside one week to talk about infertility awareness. Today we'll be having this broadcast with two of Potakot's finest from Nisa Prime Fertility Center, Potakot River State. With me today we have Dr. Chia Ionenge. Thank Sir, you. you're welcome. Thank you. And also Dr. Elizabeth Boju Madam. Thank you. Thank you. National Infertility Awareness Week. Uh, it's one of its kind celebrated all over the world. And Nigeria has has this January. We want to talk about a few things with respect to infertility, since that's the topic for um, today. As medical personnel, as professionals in the fertility field. So I will start with you. What has been your challenges with the treatment of infertility specific to Nigeria? <coughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, before we begin to address the challenges, it will be very important for us to understand exactly what is infertility. Infertility is defined as the inability to achieve pregnancy or conception within one year of vaginal unprotected intercourse. One year for couples who are below 35 years and then for couples who are more than 35 years is actually within six months. If you have not been able to get pregnant within six months of adequate, frequent vaginal unprotected intercourse. Adequate vaginal intercourse is described as three to four times in every week. If I'm not able to get pregnant. And so the challenges, as we are all aware, number one, ignorance, number okay. two, poverty, okay. and number three, other misconceptions because of where we find ourselves. Ignorance in the sense that a lot of people don't know what is actually the problem. Okay. And then, uh, because what you don't know, you cannot, you will not be able to solve that problem. And because as the WHO has uh, rightly pointed out, there are three basic problems for facing humanity, ignorance, poverty, and disease. But if you tackle ignorance, the other two are easy to handle. And so the issues of infertility too, there are a lot of misconceptions about it because people don't really know. Some people feel it's a spiritual problem, some people feel that if they are being bewitched, and so people say, no, it's not the hospital thing, it's not something like that. The, the other thing that follow naturally is the delay, mm -hmm. the delay. Okay. People get married for five years, for 10 years, and then by the time a woman that got married when she was 24 or 22, mm -hmm. by the time they begin to seek for help when they are in their early 40s or even late 40s. And as a result, all that challenges will just follow crop up, uh, crop up at, as a result of those delays. So basically, these are maybe is the ignorance and other things that um, we are all religious practices, traditional practices, misconceptions about what infertility or that. There, some people do the denial. They deny that no, it's not a question, no, it's not a problem. And then at the end of the day, you just find out that we call you at 45 years. And menopause is knocking on your door, door and all that. The madam is stressed out, the ma marriage is under tension mm -hmm. and all that. So basically, those are the challenges that we've been facing. Very interesting. So when we get to that point, we have people running around. We're talking about people living in denial and then the level of ignorance. Madam, I'd like to ask you, Dr. Elizabeth, why does it seem like Nigerians are not open about talking about their fertility journey? Um, out there in the Western world, we have people who own their problems, we have people who have support groups that they belong to and they talk about it openly, their family and friends are aware that they are dealing with infertility. Why is the case different here in Nigeria? Thank you. Oh, like Dr. Chia said, this part of the world, we are peculiar, especially because of our culture. I would say one of the main reasons why most Nigerians are not opening up is because of stigmatization. Okay. They believe that if they open up about their fertility journey, they will be stigmatized that, oh, this couple cannot have a baby on their own, they have to seek medical advice and all that. So they want to keep it to themselves. 
just because of that stigmatization. That's the main reason that I've seen in my fertility work with most couples. Even when they are talking to their close friend, they will tell them, yes, I have this baby, and the, you know, the approach or the manner of getting pregnant is not something they want to open up to anybody. And the main reason might be stigma. And again, it could be culture too, because okay. you know, we are in a culture where you don't really want other people to know what you're doing. We've had some cases where even close relation, when they are doing this fertility treatment, they don't even want to tell their sisters or brothers because they believe that, well, privacy could be another thing. They just want to keep it as private as possible to themselves. But like I can say, in Nigeria, our main reason for not opening up is just the stigma that is attached to it. But I would say that that is, you know, is not as much as what it used to be in the past. People are beginning to open up now with their fertility journey, although it's not as good as we expect it to be, but that stigma is, you know, is reducing now. So we can probably say that Nigeria is on a journey of destigmatizing the disease of infertility. Dr. Chiaz has described infertility as a disease. So people first of all need to know that and own it. And as Dr. Elizabeth has said, the stigmatization, many people are still looked down on because of the condition of infertility <coughs> that they have to deal with. So I'll come back to you again, Dr. Chair. What then would you say to couples? What advice would you give to couples who are struggling with infertility in Nigeria? Yes. Uh, the first thing I would say is that there's nothing to be ashamed of about. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, you have to own up and face your problem. And because uh, if you don't do that, what you don't confront, you will not be able to conquer. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so, until you are, you own up to confront that challenge. And how do you confront it? Own it up, own up, own up, and then share it with with your. I know we are religious people. Share it with your pastor. Share it with your friend. Come forward. Don't wait for too long. As we've always said, okay. If you have tried to get pregnant one to six months and you are within the ages of 35 and 40, you don't even need to wait. There's nothing wrong for people to just walk to the clinic and say, okay, I want to do um, fertility evaluation Screening, check. Yes. Screening yeah. check. We, we call it preconception care. And there are hospitals who are offering this uh, care all over the place. You go there, you just want to find out what are the problems. And then, when you own up, go to the right place. Okay. Go to the right place. The other challenge is that people don't go to the right place to get the right diagnosis and what the right thing to be done. Mm -hmm. And so by the time they keep beating about the bush, they keep beating about the bush, and by the time that they wasted all the money that they claim they don't have, by the time they want to seek the real help at the right place, you discover that their money, their resources have, have been wasted and all that. So the first thing is own up and confront it. You seek for help, call for help, look for help. Don't wait until it is getting too late. Don't wait. If you try this once or two times and it's not working, look for help. Ask questions. And then this is the era of uh, social media, and that is the essence of this program. Now, go to the social media. A lot of information is out there. You can just find a number that will make you call and make all the difference in your life. And you end your many years of frustrations and, 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 and distress. So the first thing is oh no, look for help and don't just look for help. Go to the right place, go to the professionals. It's unfortunate that in an environment in Nigeria, everybody is a specialist <coughs> in everything. Every woman, every man on every street is treating this, go and consult mm -hmm. this one. They, they somebody, they say, oh, he's setting the wound. You go there, they mm -hmm. set your wound, and then it didn't work. You say, there's somebody that will give you one native medicine there, and all that. No one in the name of, if you go to the hospital, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And those places they go to is not cheap. So try and let them people come forward. Let them ask questions and then they will be able to find solutions. The delay is not the option for in this case of infertility because fertility is time bound. Mm. 
uh, and there's a time limit to which a woman managing her at that stage, even though we're in a, a, in a phase where technology, at every, te uh, technology and science has improved the chances of women, but there's a time that how will you now start getting your know, baby at 70? Mm -hmm. Will you wait? How long are you going to lose those children? And those are issues yeah. that you, So time is of essence in the team management. So timely intervention is also required. Timely intervention, that is one very serious advice. Um, you mentioned people coming out and seeking the right help, talking to people. That means it's also important for everyone to have an idea of what the right thing is. Those in the churches, those in the mosques, those in social groups, when people talk about these problems, let them be able to direct them to the right sources. Very, very useful information. Thank you very much. One other thing you have mentioned is that the, the problem of poverty is a challenge also to fertility treatment. And then people have it as this notion that what if it fails, uh, the money they have spent is just all gone. Dr. Elizabeth, what can you advise couples who have had series of failed fertility treatment, failed IVFs, what can they do? What can you advise them to do further? Thank you. You know, fertility treatment is not a easy treatment. It's both um, emotional, time-consuming, with financial implications. So it's not easy on the part of those that have had failed cycle, not to talk of series of failure. Oh, my advice to them is that first, they should find out from the maybe the fertility uh, management what is the reason for the failure. There are some cases that it might be due to structural reason, possibly maybe the womb, you know, cannot take the baby because of some structural problem that cannot be corrected. Such cases can be advised on other mode of getting their you know fertility um, achievement. We have one called third party um, fertility. If we get to that point, they should know. But some cases might not really have structural problem, it's just that they need to try again. Because like even in high behavior, it's not at that every first attempt that somebody gets pregnant, they may need to try again. The most important thing is not, not to give up. Somebody say IVF will work for you at the point that you decide to give up. If you make a first attempt at IVF and you didn't get pregnant and say, oh, I'm not doing it again. That is your result. It will not work. Do you understand? Yes. But such a person can try the second time and get pregnant. May even have twins. You understand? Having trouble for the trouble. So the first thing is never to give up on the facility journey because we know that in high behavior, the success rate is not 100% guaranteed. But if the person try again, provided there is no problem, you know, with the woman carrying a pregnancy, you can get pregnant. Another thing is that some people might not, might be having failures, maybe because of age-related failure. Such people to have option that you can be advised on, like we are talking about third party IVF. So in cases like that, they may need those options. So the most important thing is that they should not give up, they should seek the reason why there's a failure and other option that they need to take to achieve success in that area. So I want to add yes, to that. Yes, yes, yes. One of the things that I've observed is that um, some people who come forward for fertility treatment, they are not actually comfortable with the suggestions of the specialist. Okay. And most of the time you discover that um, you've, you've, you've identified a potential a challenge and you advise them that please this is what you think to optimize the chances, to enhance your chances of success. But they are, you will insist. And such things are not usually not advised. So one of the advice we will give them is that please, they should listen to the counsel of the specialists that they are. Now, they are not God, but having been in that field for a while, and having trained in that area, for instance, um, if you if you go to do a fertility treatment, IVF, and they say, okay, madam, we, we say that you have uterine fibroid that may be a challenge, and the position of those fibroids, sometimes women say, no, no, no. We have heard that uh, fibroid does not stop conception, it doesn't stop this, and it doesn't stop that. Yes, but the doctor is telling you that the position, he said, no, 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 no. Uh, this, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if the doctor now you know, succumb to that pressure and then do the treatment. Of course, 
but people will say you will know the, the how the weekend will be from when from Wednesday. And so sometimes it is just to advise them, listen, listen, take the counsel and the advice now of, of just as he said, if you need a third party for, for, for your treatment, why not? Okay. But some of those things matter a lot in the success. So good news is that the options for treatment are increasing. Dr. Chia, you talked about time limitation with respect to fertility treatments. What then are the health and psychological implications for single women in their 50s who still wish to attain um, success in their fertility journey? What can we say to such particular? Right. Dr. Elisa, I just mentioned the third party okay. the option that is available. Um, the chances are open to everybody. Uh, it's just for you to keep hope alive mm -hmm. and then come forward and then the options that are there will make them available to you. So nobody should say uh, it can never be. It can never be. There is hope for everybody. Uh, we have seen people in their late 50s and I think we recorded early 60s that got pregnant through the assisted conception using a third party and all that. So nobody should just give up on his or herself that oh it's over and over. It is never over until it is over. Mm -hmm. You know, there is always saying that once there is life, there is hope. So you cannot afford to be hopeless at any point in time in your fertility journey because at the end of the day, uh, my professor used to say uh, when we uh, training that time, he said, Dr. Chia, don't you be in a hurry to say you are going to remove somebody's womb. She may require it, she may need it later in life. You can never tell. So that is the challenge. That, that, those, are, those, are, those are the advice we are going to give. The emotional traumas are there, the challenges, financial issues are there, but you cannot afford to be hopeless. Keep hope alive and you will surely get your fertility dreams come to pass. So keeping hope alive, that is one big thing we are taking away from this interview today. We've been talking about third party involvement in fertility treatment. Dr. Elizabeth, can you tell us from your experience, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of this third party treatment, what we call, what we know as surrogacy? What are the pros and cons of surrogacy here in Nigeria? Thank you. Like you said, surrogacy is one of the third party um, treatment that we have in Nigeria. And surrogacy, surrogacy meaning that somebody carrying pregnancy for maybe an intended couple. Possibly, maybe they have a medical condition that they cannot carry the baby by themselves, so they need a third party to carry the baby for them. That is the surrogate. Yeah, when you look at the advantage and disadvantage of surrogacy, you look at it on both parts both the part of the intending couple and the surrogate herself. For the intending couple, they have this uh, joy of still fulfilling their family dream. Even though they cannot do it by themselves, there is somebody else that can carry the baby to town for them. And they can still use their gene, you know, to you know to create um, to complete their family. That advantage is there for them. Then when you look at the disadvantage, maybe the stress, you know, it's time consuming and the cost implication too. Because you have to, you know, treat two parties now. You have to compensate the surrogate, so you look at the stress, you look at the mental and emotional involvement on the part of the intending parent. But when you look at the surrogate, yeah, the surrogate still have a lot of things to gain. For instance, there is the joy of bringing, you know, hope and joy to another family. You are part of, you know, creating hope in this home. You understand? You are part of creating joy. So they have that sense of peace and fulfillment that they've been able to help a couple achieve their family dreams. And they also have that joy of bringing a child, you know, to be. So that mother own thing is also an advantage to restore it. When you look at the pros of the, you know, the part of the story, okay, it's not an easy thing to carry a pregnancy, the emotional attachment and all that, but all, all the same, the surrogate and the intelligent are protected by the legal binding. 
But they see that feeling, that emotional feeling of having carried a child for nine months and at the end of the nine months we let go. You know, that could be a challenge for some surrogate, that emotional attachment challenge for surrogate. And they also have something to compensate for their efforts. So that can be an advantage for them as well. So, so yes, uh, you know, the surrogacy of, uh, it is a very important component of this, of a third party. As, as I always say, you know, everybody must not buy this aeroplane before you can fly. Yeah. You can imagine that everybody is supposed to buy your aircraft before you can fly to Abuja or to Lagos. How many people mm -hmm. be able to, must you be able to buy your car before you travel? Mm -hmm. And so that is the provision of the surrogacy. And I always say, <laughs> sometime uh, uh, one of our um, uh, uh, lady came to me and was saying, oh, uh, somebody told her that uh, surrogacy is, uh, is hypocrisy, why if you cannot, why not? And I said, okay, fine. Jesus Christ himself is a product of a surrogate. Mm -hmm. God used Mary as his surrogate to carry Jesus. Now Jesus is now the most celebrated personality on that. So that if there are medical challenges, somebody who has had cancer treatment, somebody who has had um, uh, what you call it, have psychiatric issues. Uh, uh, so why is is a is a very valid form of treatment, and that is the advantage that people who um, for make for most most uh, a, a lot of issue reasons they wouldn't be able to be parents. Now that's when this has offered them the joy of fulfilling. No, fertility is like a human right. Yes. It's a human right. Everybody sees it as a right and then you'll be able to fulfill that dream. So it's very, very important and, and uh, we encourage people to, to step forward. It's just as I said, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't buy your car for you to travel. You shouldn't buy a aeroplane before you fly to another place. So that is how somebody is every day, he just help you to carry you and drop you there and then all of you smile and get to your destination. destination. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Thank you very much for that addition, Sam. With the advancement of science and technology, we want to ask Dr. Chia, in this our time, um, in the olden days, we used to have challenges with couples um, having the AS genocide, getting married, talkers of having children, because of the fear of producing sickling children, children with sickle cell disease. With fertility treatment, can this be addressed? Can couples with AS, both couples being AS, now come forward and be able to have children without the fear of producing sickle cell children? Very well, very well. Um, uh, it's one of the innovations that have been brought to bear in the era of uh, assisted reproduction technology. Okay. We call it as a pre implantation genetic testing. Okay. And why we do that? People come forward, people are coming forward to do uh, fertility to IVF now just because, okay, we are both AS and so we want to be sure that the baby that we carry does not come up with uh, SS, SS genotype. Okay. And so what they do is that they go through the normal stimulation, retrieval and then fertilization and then a particular, the embryo is grown to a particular state and then they take a vows and, embryo and determine the genotype of the baby. And then they, they now isolate the ones that are genotype A or AS and then discard them, but remove, se separate them from the ones that have AS. And the last time I was in Abuja, um, the technology in Abuja, one of the, four, the founders of the fertility treatment in Nigeria, just announced that, oh, it may be, oh, the reason for the IVF treatment was because of the genotype, they just delivered the baby genotype AA and because they do pre-implantation genetic testing and then they were able to get to something else. So people need not be feared, but as I said, the cost implications that initially when the thing came it was very 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 expensive but now that the centers are coming up in Nigeria the cost is coming down I believe that in the next 10 years the so cost very will be very very affordable <coughs> to everybody and then that that fear will be uh, a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. Any closing words for the infertility week that we are having 
um, this week long event. Any closing words from any of you? What would you say to Nigerians out there and especially people trying to conceive? That's why this Yeah, like I said, the most important thing is never to give up. Okay? And like we have also said, delay. We should work delay, we should act fast. Anybody that is struggling with fertility issue act smart so that they can be able to you know, achieve what, what they want to achieve because when they don't act fast it causes mm -hmm. a lot of all this of the treatment journey. You know, most of these failures, third parties, some of them come because as an act amount of delay. Mm -hmm. So if they seek help on time, I'm sure they need to get what they want. First thing reminds is that infertility is increasing all over the world. It's estimated now that one out of between one out of eight to ten couples are having challenges. And I believe that the society should get interested. Let let the society be let us be one another's keeper. And then let us open up and then you know go to if you want to seek help go to the right place, go to the right place at the right time so that you will be sure that you get the right treatment at the right time. We want to say a very big thank you to Dr. Chia Ian again and Dr. Elizabeth Bojumoyo, both of NISA Prime Fertility Center, Port Harcourt River State. They have talked to us about our National Infertility Awareness Week, talking basically about infertility treatment in Nigeria. One thing we can take away from this interview is that hope is alive. Infertility is real. It is very close to us. We have heard that one in eight couples will have a fertility challenge. We should all be one another's keeper. Give the right advice to those who come to you with their fertility challenges. Tell them to seek the right help. Tell them to act fast. Yes, we can have faith. But knowing the right thing to do can also help us to get solutions faster. This brings us to the end of our interview today. As we continue the celebration of the National Infertility Awareness Week in Nigeria, we say keep hope alive. Thank you for listening to us. Bye-bye.